Good afternoon, and welcome to another belligerent version of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your befuddled and bewildered host, Voice of Doom! <laughs> Hello. Okay, I'm going to do a quick one before I go to work. Been watching uh, the news and I want to uh, be the first one to call for the dismantling, dismemberment, and discardation of this organization that we used to call the US government. It's gotta go and I'll tell you why. Now <clears throat> as I promised you I did not watch the pile of bile that is called the State of the Union by an acolyte of Satan who is now the uh, head of state or what used to be the state but I couldn't help but seeing the highlights and lowlights of that particular screed. And I saw other things, so I am going to be very even handed when it comes to my lambasting of our so called government. I am not going to take sides, I am not going to be partisan. I am a nonpartisan naysayer to every single part of our government. Now, some of the highlights, well, thought it was a highlight that the goppers actually had the gumption to boo and hiss and scream and shout liar throughout Petri Dish's speech. That was good. Finally, they're getting a little bit of gumption. Not much, but a little. I enjoyed not seeing that shrew, succubus, lush, sitting behind Petri Dish at the podium, rubbing her knuckles together in glee after every word that Petri Dish said. So her absence from that tableau was very gratifying for me to see. I hope she leaves forever. I don't ever want to see her face again. I thought it was funny that up Chuck Schumer kept flashing the loser sign to Petri Dish. I don't know if Petri caught the, the gesture, but he flashed it many times. L. Everybody knows what that means. So I guess up Chuck is on to something there. Now, <clears throat> finish the job. That was said 12 times. I found that out from Harris Faulkner, not President Harris. That Petrie wants to finish all the jobs that he started. Now I say dismiss him. Um, he's got to be removed. He should not be able to finish any job he started. And the whole speech was more or less full of crap, just as I predicted. But finishing the job now, Fox had their fair and balanced commentary, and they had D's on there, touting everything that Petri Dish has done. It was sickening. And they also spouted the same platitude. Now, in a perfect world, which I would create, <clears throat> it would be a capital offense um, punishable by a summary execution anyone who uses a platitude ever in the government so then they had at best just all shut up and not say anything ever and it would be quick because these platitudes are getting on my nerves uh, the border what are we going to do about that uh, well if we just work together to get comprehensive 
immigration reform, everything would be good. What does that mean? Comprehensive immigration reform. You're going to make all new laws to make sure that the border is totally secure and that the only people coming in are the ones that do the paperwork and wait 10 years. We already have those laws. Their idea of comprehensive immigration reform is keep things going the way they're going, only make it faster and give people citizenship the minute they come through the door. So that's their idea. Which is wrong on its outset. Now, what else can I say about finishing jobs? Finish the job of making sure enough fentanyl comes in here to kill everybody? All right. Well, that's being done well. Finish the job of making sure no balloons come. Now, some of the low lights I heard on the news from Petri Dish were disgusting and untrue. China was on the rise during my predecessor's tenure in office. They were getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And now they're not. They're getting weaker, thanks to me. Now, <clears throat> they can make up imaginary balloons that they suddenly found out were out there, you know, during uh, Orangey's administration, which they didn't talk about, but they went back and looked at the radar and go, hey, wait a minute. There's some sort of a weird uh, air mass that we don't know what the hell that is. It must have been a balloon. So, are we going to let this go on or not? I say get rid of them. And I, not with elections. Forget that. The American electorate are idiots. They have no political acumen whatsoever. They have no idea what's going on beyond their own mailbox. And democracy is a failure, okay? Let's just put it in very blunt terms. We tried it. It didn't work. Too much corruption. Too many lies. Problems aren't being solved. So we got to get rid of this government now. Let's go to the other side and see how idiotic they are. We're going to have hearings and get to the bottom of everything. We're going to figure everything out. And we're going to hold people accountable. Now, all right, let me give you an example. Say there's a murder in a house. And the detectives all show up. And they say, who called in this uh, murder? Not that we think it's a murder, but let's see. Who called it in? Well, it was this person. Oh, well, is that person credible? Well, the body's right there, riddled with bullets. But what about the phone call? Who called it in? And how'd they know there was a murder? I don't even know if there is a murder. So, well, why don't we look at the evidence and see what we can figure out about who might have caused this. And it's like, well, we don't want to look at the evidence. We just want to figure out who exposed this. We'll go after them. That's what the goppers are doing right now on many fronts, and I'm really sick of it. I don't want, I'm really getting pissed. And if I get pissed, boy, you guys better watch out. Because I'll use my mind, and I'll make things happen. They are having hearings about why Twitter suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop which is proven to be true it's proven to be authentic why did you suppress it who told you to suppress it was it the fbi why didn't you suppress these guys why did you suppress the republicans and not the okay suppression why don't we look at the laptop why doesn't they look into what's in there and we'll do hearings on that like corruption like bribery like influence peddling like total being totally being compromised by foreign countries you know we want to see why uh, Twitter didn't uh, allow it on after the fact and then whiners people who have no business being in government bartenders whining and crying that it's a big waste of time it's already water under the bridge 
the election's over. Why do we have to talk about this now? And some guy with a blue scarf over his head, I don't know. Maybe he has cancer, okay, I'm sorry. But I'm not that sorry. Um, asking idiot questions, saying, not even asking questions, just saying what a waste of time it is. They've already apologized. What more do we have to do? Why don't you look at the stupid ass laptop and see what's in it and start investigating that, you idiots. Okay, second hearing, or about to be a hearing. Documents are everywhere. I don't know how they got out of the skiff. I don't know how thousands of papers and boxes of documents got out of the skiff and never came back and were found in garages and in think tanks. But we're going to find out how that happened. Well, why don't you look at the documents themselves and investigate that. See what the documents say. Well, we don't care what the documents said. We just care that they found them and we're going to get to the bottom of that. They're not going to get to the bottom of anything. Now, if they don't look and see what's in the documents that Petri dish was trying so hard to keep from public view, then why bother figuring out why they're in the garage? Why do a intensive investigation about how those documents got there? We don't care what's in the documents. In fact, take them and burn them. We don't want to see it. We don't want to hear it. Monkeys. Hear no evil. See. Speak. We don't want to see that because, and I've told you this before, they can't investigate any of that stuff. Investigate their laptop. Investigate what's inside the documents. They expose the whole damn government as a corrupt organization. You're not going to be able to bring one side down without bringing everybody down. So don't upset the apple cart. As you can see, I'm a little miffed. I don't want to see this Petri dish on the podium again. This better be his last State of the Union speech. One way or the other, it's going to be. Either he's going to be impeached, which should have happened a month ago, should have happened a long time ago. Oh, well, we're not going to go backwards. We'll wait till he makes another mistake and then impeach him. No, impeach him for everything he's done. Impeach him for his existence. And uh, more idiocy. The D's all going. How oh, orangey is at fault. And everything that's happening bad now is all his fault. And he was letting balloons fly willy-nilly, which we have no evidence of. And he was totally incompetent. And now our beloved Petri dish is trying to clean up the mess. And it's a big project. So I'm going to go on about this later. I think I've said enough, and I didn't really say anything. I think I said a lot. So uh, I'm happy that I'm only have 11 subscribers and one true fan Nick because if I had more if I had 1.6 million subscribers and 6,000 views the first you know two hours that my videos are on the YouTube they'd ban me first they'd ban me for copyright infringement and then they ban me just for what I'm saying because it's the truth and nobody wants to hear that, do they? Keep our heads in the sand and hope everything goes away. China is way weaker than it was during Orangey's term. Way weaker. You can tell by looking at the South China Sea. So I'll leave it there. I'm going to talk more about this over the next few days and weeks because we're getting close to the end want to get as much in as I can before everything starts falling apart in earnest. So I'll leave it there. It's long enough and thanks everybody. I gotta get to work. Enjoy the day.